We arrived at the coast, our arrows descending from its sky lane and dropping down to a parking spot on the road that ran adjacent to the beach. The boardwalk was pretty much empty, just a few people, and all the vendors with their hot dog stands and ice cream shops were closed up. I activated my monster locator, and we headed down the boardwalk, past the restroom. The beach was beautiful at the moment, the sun reflecting off the waves as they lashed at the shore, and the seagulls in the air squawking and occasionally dipping into the water. It was noticeably windier near the shore, and I could smell the ocean now, feel the sand cracking beneath my vans as I continued closer to the waterline. I heard our next catch before I saw it. A sad melody floated in the air. At first, I assumed it was one of the few beachgoers, but seeing Aya brandish her buster sword, and Lady C do the same, flourishing both her weapons as she got into a stalking position, told me otherwise. What is it? I don't know yet. Aya turned left, moving away from the waterline. Lady Cassandra, I will engage it first, and you will be my backup. Lady C simply nodded, taking a few steps back so I could go ahead. We could see up and down the beach, and we clearly saw that there was nothing there, which only made the melody we heard that much stranger. It was the voice of a man, a low, garbled voice that was almost jazzy. The steeple is a place Where all the people go The devil knows this old shadow Gonna see a show Gonna see a show The Huntresses kept searching, and as they did, I went for my own weapon. I adjusted the shoulder strap just a little bit and turned my mini base on. While the two hunters were trying to figure out the source of the sound, I simply closed my eyes, tuning into the voice I heard. My hand naturally went to the neck of the guitar, finding the first note. Options appeared on my pane of vision, my iNet screen, and I mentally tweaked the sound that was coming out of my instrument. I wanted something a little bit twangy, something that felt more like a fretless bass than the futuristic instrument I held in my hands. I listened to the singing a little bit more, nodding my head as I found the groove, my fingers playing along to the singing man's sad song. Chase! But I ignored Aya, still focusing on the music and finding that perfect space. Damn, did playing music feel like something else entirely, like dipping your wand into the future and opening a galaxy of our shared noise, our history of listening to escape, listening for joy, listening for... Mm. Keep playing, man, a voice said to me. Inspired by the command, I started up again, this time really getting into it, even throwing in a few chords to keep it vibrant. yelled, but I ignored them both, so focused was I on the sound. I heard a noise zip past my skull, a swing, definitely one of Aya's throwing knives. Why did you have to go and do that? The man's voice asked. It was at this point that I opened my eyes to find a towering shadow made of ink leaning over my shoulder, nodding as it looked from me to the instrument to the huntresses. Keep playing he told me, eyes throwing knife sticking out of his form. No time to hunt when there's music to be played. Chase, be careful! Lady C cried out, a wave of energy spreading around her as she prepared an attack. But there was something about this man made of ink that I liked, something I felt that I could jive with. Maybe it was a musician thing, but I told Lady C to stand down and I continued playing, waiting for the ink man to start singing. The man sluiced around me, 
bobbing his head up and down as he found the groove. He found the pocket, and soon he was crooning alongside me. We jammed for another few minutes, the man made of ink snapping his fingers as he sang a sad, sultry melody. Once we finished, I looked up to him and made it really simple. Hey, I've got a dojo. It's part of Everlife, and I'm part of an alpha duo. The other alpha is a female, a singer and a musician, and I bet she'd love to jam with you. Do you want to join up with us? Everlife, huh? His form quaked. I guess it beats sitting at this beach waiting for something to wash in. You got a name? I asked him, as the net made of light twisted up my arm. Call me Dalton, he said, a toothy smile on his face. 